evening. This is KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and standing by is actor, director, and producer Mark Sawyer. We're going to talk about New Stages, a collective of teaching artists, directors, writers, and performers from Broadway, film, and television who are committed to producing wildly entertaining experiences for seniors. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and I'm so glad that you used my my tagline of wildly entertaining. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I, I felt I felt like we needed to make sure it didn't seem like uh, you know it was arts and crafts time. I wanted right. to be like, no, we're cool. Like, absolutely. Cool. Well, you know, you're trying to educate people. Switching up the the narrative of you know aging is not a negative. It can be really enlightening at different stages of in your in your life, and. Um, you can, as you can probably see in your life, you can see this spark in people. Oh, it's so exciting. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I've taught for years and years and years, uh, students of all ages, and especially in um, doing like an improvisation workshop, it is remarkable to me how easy it is for seniors to tap into that sort of imaginative world. Um, in ways that I think we, as you know, when we're younger, we we have all these sensors. We're taught to put all these sensors up. Right. Um, and I think you, you know, people as we as we get older, we sort of start to realize those sensors are are silly and they were keeping us, you know, boxed in in a weird yes. way. Um, so yeah. it's been really fun. I, I love. I always do uh, improvisational uh, activities and and games with all of my classes because mostly because it's for my entertainment because they're brilliant <laughs> like so much better than <laughs> most of my other students it's not even funny I was going to say there's uh such a power in play mm. and we forget as we get older how important that is I took classes at the Groundlings and UCB and they'll be all different ages and I especially love the people that you know older adults who would get up there and be so brave and funny and it just was inspiring yeah, I agree. I mean, I think I think that um, you know, there's a reason we call them plays <laughs> because it is. It starts with play, and um, I really that has always been my approach. I always play. I always try to get a, an energy in the room that feels like open and expressive, and you can be as silly or as ridiculous as you want to be, and and there's no judgment. It's it's all just sort of this open, creative environment, uh, and they really. But my students who are seniors really respond to that in a beautiful way. So give me a sense of how you've had to adapt during the pandemic and keep well, people engaged. Yeah, thank you. This has been a really challenging year and a half for sure. But um, inside of those challenges, we've learned a lot. Um, basically, um, we, up until um, the pandemic, all of our stuff was in, in person. Uh, and we did acting classes and improv classes. Uh, each year we do a project um, as part of the city of West Hollywood's One City, One Pride Arts Festival that's uh, specifically with the uh, LGBT Center. And so that's always just this like incredible in-person experience. We're there every day. We're sharing stories. We're creating and, and uh, uh, sort of curating all of their personal narratives into this piece that really talks to pride and, and their part in the whole process of, of gay liberation, which is kind of remarkable because they saw it all. Yes. Um, so that first year when it looked like we weren't, first we weren't gonna be able to do it. And then, you know, the wild notion that we could maybe do it online came up and I said, you know what, I will, I will make this work. We are going to make this work. And it was a, a big old learning curve for sure. But here's the thing, they got it. I mean, they learned it. They figured right. it out. They're now, you know, I have one student who's 89 who uh, I called her the other day and I said, hey, can, can you go to lunch with me today? I wanted to chat with you. And she said, I can't, Mark. I have a, uh, my uh, Zoom tap class <laughs> and my chair yoga at one. So, right. <laughs> and so like in a weird way, I feel like this pandemic, like the upside of it is that a lot of people who were somewhat isolated and maybe weren't as able and mobile to go around and do a lot of activities outside and, and, and drive places and whatever, now are able to participate in a very a meaningful way and connect in a meaningful way yes. through the technology. So right. I'm kind of, I have to say there's a big silver lining. I mean, we literally, I 
This year, did I'm doing a, a whole lecture series that's really fun and it works perfectly on Zoom. Um, and um, yeah, so there's a lot going on there. That's amazing. Yeah. I feel that a lot of seniors as well learned a lot of technology they might not have known before. Mm -hmm. And as you said, to their advantage, because now they're engaged and they're connected with things they may might have done years ago or new things they decided to try. Yes, yes. Um, we, we thought about actually doing a class in and of itself that was just about um, um, Zoom. And I was going to call it Unmute Yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because how many, how, have we been in any Zoom call? I haven't been in no Zoom call pretty much where there wasn't somebody who's like, <laughs> and, and people are always like, unmute yourself. So now they're, they're really savvy to that that part of it for sure. They're yes. like, oh, wait a minute, I'm muted, sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do, I feel like, again, like in a city like Los Angeles, it's so hard sometimes because you get to a certain age and transportation is an issue. And mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, the idea of, of getting up and getting in a car and going someplace or even like the mobility itself is an issue. Sure. Um, so I don't know. It's interesting. I, I pitched all of my um, classes to Jewish Family Services uh, a few months ago, and they're like, yes, because we have so many Zoom people now. Yes. Um, and so I did my first class with them. I had like 22 students. Um, so it's it's good. I think I think we're on to something. I think there's something special about this environment that is really going to help us connect. And, and I want to make it a part of everything we do, even if we are in person, sure. to allow people to zoom in and right. to include virtual parts of our, of our performances and everything. That's amazing. You know, yeah. one thing I will say is I had mentioned to you before we started, I was in a fellowship and we read a lot of research about how uh, because of the pandemic, older adults were pushed aside for safety reasons that they were more isolated, became more lonely depressed, other health issues, uh, so are younger generations. But mm -hmm. what you're doing is engaging them and making them feel less lonely and giving them some laughter and levity in the situation. Yeah. I mean, it was really fun around um, the end of the last year because, you know, we'd all been through this together and we'd all had to learn all of this together and really try to rethink how we work. And so um, I was able to get... Um, a grant from um, LA County, and they and basically uh, with part of the money, I was able to um, to do a project that we had on the books, but we didn't know if we were going to be able to do because of of um, of the COVID, uh, yeah, pandemic. Yeah. And so we did a, a roast of 2020. Um, <laughs> it was called New Year, please. Right. <laughs> and so it's so great. Like it was very laughing, like, like they all had a million yeah. stories, a million crazy things that had happened to them during, you know, the whole pandemic. Um, yeah. We, we did a, a wonderful parody of the 12 days of, of uh, Christmas called the 12 days of COVID. Uh, <laughs> and we sang it and we did like a virtual choir. It was really fun. We actually, I love had, this. yeah, yeah. We just when and we, and what's fun is that you know, the good news about the virtual stuff is that then you can actually have an event itself around it. And so now that they're familiar with Zoom, we take the pieces, we put them all together, we edit them into a piece, into a cohesive show, mm -hmm. and then we have a watch party. And so then it becomes That's like, good. so we had a fun New Year's Eve watch party with all of our students and, you know, all the people who came to, to watch, which was, you know, a lot of people, which was really fun. It's, it's so interesting because you think about how everybody is very isolated. And do you see this almost like a character arc in some of the people that you meet? Like they go from kind of quiet to coming out of their shell? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one student who um, recently, I just did a recent a piece with them. Um, and she said that she showed it to her son and her son was like, I didn't, who are you? <laughs> Didn't That's know. what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and even she says, she says, I can't believe that I'm saying or doing the things that I've been doing mm -hmm. in this class. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting how, again, how much everyone came to rely on just, just the getting together right. first and foremost. Like we found ourselves over and over again. I, I'm like, well, we're going to extend the class time a little bit because everybody wanted to talk yeah. for 20 minutes and everybody had a lot to say. And 
I kind of felt like that was part of it. You know, that's part of how we are going to get together as a group and create yes. some fun is if we're all able to fully communicate and fully express ourselves. So, um, so yeah, that's, that is really exciting. And it's exciting to see some people who maybe had been performers when they were in their twenties or thirties and, you know, had gotten jobs and done different things. And then, and now they're retired and they're like, yeah, why the heck not? I why mean, not? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. learn to tap dance. I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn to whatever, you know, so that's kind of a, that's a, a very refreshing thing as well. In fact, we've even had a few students, not that this is our aspiration with our company, but we've had a few students who now are booking jobs. They're booking acting jobs. Like That is great. I know, right? So what a great thing. Like, you know, the truth but think is- think about it, because they always say, I, I know when I was taking um, different classes, an agent would say, we really want you to take improv. We want you to study at the Groundlings. We want you to do UCB. Because then you go in there and you, you can have that comfort when someone yes. says we want you to pretend you're skateboarding you know in your pajamas yeah. or and so i can see why this is the foundation for a next chapter in somebody's life oh absolutely absolutely and and it's funny because we've even had gotten to a place my friend and i who who does a similar type of work we've gotten to a place where people call us and they're like do you have anybody who's like over 90 who's really funny who's you know blah blah, blah. and we're like what are we casting directors now um, but you know, it is, it's a very unique world that we've, yes. we've sort of opened up and, um, and I, I love it. I mean, I was that person who sat with my grandparents, you know, all night long, listening to their stories for the 50th time. I and I was that. perfectly happy to do it. Cause I loved, I loved them. I love their stories. You know, um, I feel like we've, if we don't have that sense of shared narrative of collective stories, we're, we're going to lose part of, of really what makes us a society, what makes us human, you know? Right. Um, and so that's a lot of our stuff has really been about personal narrative, especially the things I do at the LGBT center. Um, and I'll be honest, selfishly, it's because their stories are amazing and, um, and need to be heard, you know, yes. by the young gay generation, but by everybody, because they sure. have a you know, unique perspective. Well, it sounds like, you know, I, I always call this um, teaching people how to become better humans. I, mm-hmm. I really feel that we need to become more compassionate and educated about the differences um, because people are missing out. Yeah. You know, if you don't see other people that are different, you know, as, as what's called social capital, mm-hmm. different ages, you know, whatever it is, uh, yeah. you're really missing out. Absolutely. And how people find us sometimes is always fascinating to me. Um, a few years ago, we had at the center, we had a, a student who came on board who um, had been a very successful artist in New York for many years. And then things had sort of fallen apart. He was homeless at the time. And yeah. um, the center, of course, is this amazing beacon of light for any for anyone who's, you know, dealing with so many different social services standpoints. Uh, they offer so many things to people and it's incredible. But I was happy because he picked up a newsletter and saw that there was this sort of project that was musical theater oriented that was about telling your story, but incorporating it into music. And, and he came and he was brilliant. And also his story was so different than anybody else's, you know, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, most of the people there probably hadn't been around someone who was actively living on the streets every week. And he had some place to go. And, you know, the center was amazing and off, always offered food for everybody when they were there. So it was actually kind of this beautiful. That's amazing. Of, like art heals us, you know. It certainly does. I was going to say, think about what that did for his mental health. Yeah, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a sense of purpose, something exciting to come to, feel yeah. a sense of belonging where maybe he couldn't go back home. Who knows? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I think that's part of it. And especially if you are a creative soul. Um, because, you know, your creativity itself can feel like um, it's robbed from you if your humanity is robbed from you or if you don't feel mm-hmm. human. Um, right. And so to tap back into that, I think, is is sort of the, the way in. It's the river in, you know, to right. be able to get right back into life again, you know. Yes. Um, people, people feel really lit up when they are in that flow state of creativity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it's true for everybody, all different ages. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. I was telling someone the other day, they were like, what, what is it that you um, do when you're anxious? I was like, 
mm, I make something because, because it's all I really have. Yeah. To, that's it, it is. It's actually probably the most important um, tool for me mm-hmm. for dealing with all sorts of life's uncertainties yeah. is like, well, let's make something or let's, let's create. Yeah. Let's make something. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a feeling you've probably been like that since you were little. I was a little bit of a, you know, imaginative, wacky, fun, crazy child. I did. I had an imaginary friend until my sister came into the world. And I think she killed him in my book. But <laughs> I think, I think that's, that's did you my press charges. I should have, I should have, because, you know, really, um, uh, yeah, I always was that person. Like I'd find a, a branch outside and suddenly it would be a Vegas showgirl headdress. And, you know, like, like I've always had this weird thing, you know? Um, but, and, and, and for me, like to let somebody else have, or to express or to open up in that way. Um, I mean, it's the joy of teaching, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's why for me, as I've been working in, in, you know, theater and uh, a little bit in media and, and film and stuff for years, but for me that it's so much, it's as joyful to watch somebody just do this wonderful thing. You know, I have a great exercise where I bring in crazy outfits and hats and wigs and beards and I just put them in the center of the room and people have to choose something and create a character and with seniors it's brilliant that's all I have to say <laughs> it's like they came up with some really really fun characters I love it so, yeah. and for you know if people watching this if you've never been involved in acting acting is also to me when I got into it was almost like therapy because you you're, you're working on your insecurities you're, you're saying I don't care if I look like a total idiot I probably don't, but I'm, I don't care. I'm right. just going to go for it. And I'm not going to analyze my next move. I'm just going to do it. Right. 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 And, and also, you know, you're, you're absolutely correct. And also just the notion that you are as an actor or any creative artist, really, you're an observer of the world. You're an observer of human nature. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts, you know, human nature itself because is, is sort of your first curiosity of, Ooh, that's fun. She's funny. Why is she doing that? What's going on? You know, you have all these questions when you see someone who's unique or interesting. And so you become an observer of human nature. And that leads to understanding behavior, which leads to creating like a full blooded human being as opposed to just a caricature. Yes. What advice would you give someone who is uh, having a hard time right now? They've been struggling during the pandemic. They are a creative, but they feel stuck because a lot of people are like, oh, you're you're so creative. You're probably doing so much and they're not. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I, I feel your pain first off, I would say, because especially for a lot of the projects that I'm working on with my production company that are writing oriented, mm-hmm. it is tough. It's tough every day to sit down and write something thinking, could we even do it? Do we know if we can even be able to, you know, there's all this, like, yeah. you, you start to, to think about the, um, the end result and not the process. And so I guess that's my biggest advice is to pick up um, your pieces and figure out how can I creatively be um, activated today. For me, um, this particular spring, um, I you know we were slowing down a little bit. We hadn't had a whole lot of projects happening. Uh, we had just finished our, our New Year's show, and I decided I was like, you know, I want to just do something that's like looks at different theater makers and shares like my research with with all of these folks on zoom and so it was actually this great thing it really helped me it helped me to just get up every day and say okay my first project was about Tennessee Williams I like gave them every detail that I knew I researched I found millions of clips pictures um, quotes recordings of him and we sat there every week and just sort of got into Tennessee Williams you know so and it was so much fun because it kind of, it did jumpstart me a little bit. It mm-hmm. jumpstarted my energy. It jumpstarted my own creative process because, um, you know, to see and to see other theater makers and, and creative people in their process is really, I think, inspiring. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd say that the other thing is, is to just take some art in, which I guess we've all done, you know, God knows we've, we've watched enough Netflix, to be, <laughs> but, but but, you know, like even watching, you know, um, I know Amazon Prime now has Broadway HD and it's so fun because there's so many shows on there 
like Shakespeare and sure. lots of musicals and lots of plays from England. And mm-hmm. it's kind of fun to, you know, watch something, you know, that kind of inspires. Definitely. And gives us a little mental vacation. Yeah, absolutely. God well. knows we need that. <laughs> Excuse me? God knows we need that. Oh, I know. So where can people find out more about you and perhaps getting involved in maybe some yeah. virtual events? Yeah, well, we have um, a website. It's newstages.org. Um, and um, we inside of the website, there are lots of videos and clips and pictures and photos of things that we've done. And also there's uh, a little blog section that, that has sort of ongoing classes that are coming up and what Great. we're doing next. Uh, our next project, I'm doing a, um, another lecture series on Zoom. Um, based on the history of queer theater, um, starting with the Greeks, hilariously, and all the way through, you know, RuPaul. Um, okay. <laughs> that's sort of the concept. That's um, great. And then my dear friend Kay Cole, who's one of our teaching artists, and, and she's a Broadway um, performer. She was the original Maggie in A Chorus Line, and she's directed oh. and choreographed on Broadway and all over the country in London. Um, she's a musical theater phenom. And so She's going to do, uh, once we're able to be in person, she's going to do a, a musical theater conservatory where she'll, where she'll take a show and sort of investigate it with a group of people. And then they'll do some sort of a showcase with a lot of the, the pieces from that show. Um, and okay. I think that's going to be really exciting. So, so uh, and again, we have a, our Pride performance next year, which um, next year I'm adding an intergenerational component. Excellent. Um, and uh, so we're going to be, pairing seniors with uh, young LGBTQ plus um, adults who are, you know, 18 to 30, whatever, just, I want to just see like, where do these people intersect? Where does Mm -hmm. the process intersect? Uh, You know, how we live our gay lives, what activism is. Yes. Things have changed so much, but have they, you know? Right. Um, So I think think it's going to be a good year for us and and please do check us out at newstages.org. Uh, and most of our information can be found right there. Fantastic. Mark, I have enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. <laughs>